Life is hard enough without having someone in your life constantly putting you down, offering critical, snide comments, or undermining or even disagreeing when you offer your opinions, thoughts, or experiences. That's like when people aren't really interested in what you've said. They respond with, thank you for sharing. Most of the time, I find it is often only a polite way of saying, hey, I'm glad you're done talking because listening to you bored me to death. Honestly, this intolerance is an issue many people struggle with, and I've listened to many an expert attempt to explain how they deal with people's criticisms. People such as Jordan Peterson, Tony Robbins, Thich Nhat Hanh, and even Eckhart Tolle. They all have some good advice. So, Thanks for sharing, you guys. I've noticed that the real reason people end up becoming fibbers, fakes, or deceivers is because when they've told the truth in the past, someone shamed, ridiculed, blamed, or condemned them. So their strategy, of course, in order to avoid more rejection and pain, is to tell lies, shift blame towards someone else and hide the truth. So the lesson here, if you want people to be truthful to you, don't chastise them when they fess up. It's that simple. Forgive and thank them for being honest and be compassionate for God's sake. In the classic book, Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu writes, care about people's approval and you will be their prisoner. In the book Painoven, Teachings of the Temple Dwellers, it says, It is important not to talk too much about things you cannot prove, especially spiritual, philosophical, and theological matters. It only causes people to become confused, upset, and defensive. Realize the deep unhappiness in the world and then grieve a little. Now I actually love the advice about this sort of thing that's in the New Testament where Jesus advises, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls before swine. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. He also says, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. So you see, people have been disagreeable for a long time. It's nothing new. But what about those who love to be disagreeable and find fault with you? What about the people who really enjoy heated debates and who challenge every word you say. There are plenty of these kinds of academic-minded types who seem to thrive on being blunt, harsh, and calling out any kind of inconsistency. These people are quite interesting to me, and I've never actually met one of these people who weren't highly ego-driven and self-absorbed maybe even a little bit narcissistic. The Buddha was once yelled at by an angry young man in a crowd. Go away, he said. 
You just want to take advantage of us. You teachers come here and you say a few pretty words and then you ask for food and money. But the Buddha, being unruffled by these insults, remained calm and he exuded a feeling of loving kindness. And he politely requested that the man come forward. So he asked him, Young sir, if you purchased a lovely gift for someone, but that person did not accept the gift, to whom does the gift then belong? This odd question took the young man by surprise, but he said, well, I guess the gift would still be mine because I was the one who bought it. Exactly so, replied the Buddha. Now you have cursed me and been angry with me, but if I do not accept your curses, if I do not get insulted and angry in return, these curses will fall back upon you, the same as the gift returning to its owner. My point is, if you are the kind of person who prefers peaceful, supportive, and nurturing interactions with others, you may find it difficult or even unnerving to have to deal with belligerent, know-it-all types who seem to get off on confrontations. Truthfully, I think such people don't have much spiritual maturity. So accept that from the start and you'll find it easier to navigate with them. I must admit, this has been a challenging thing for me all my life because I don't like conflict. I prefer to live and let live but I have learned the harsh reality. Sometimes you just have to stand up to bullies. And the best way to do that is by first looking at the core issues within yourself and asking, why is it that I'm getting triggered by what this person says or does? In my understanding, the answer is really quite simple. It may be even too simple. When you are triggered by someone's words or behavior, it is because their way that things are is different from your own. And you feel the need to defend yourself. The same is true when someone reacts to something you say your way that it is conflicts with their way that it is and they have to defend themselves. That's it. Understand that and you have unlocked the key on how to remain unaffected by what someone says. You must realize that every person on this planet has some level of repressed core trauma. It is impossible to be born and survive in this world without having been negatively impacted and some worse than others. Everyone suffers degrees of pain, anxiety, loneliness, dissatisfaction, sickness, and boredom. Accepting this, you can fully appreciate why some people behave cruelly and why they are harsh, critical, or sometimes even downright mean. It is because of their own past unresolved trauma, which they don't know how to release. All psychopathic people have been traumatized at some point, either in this lifetime or another. When you fully comprehend the existence of core trauma, you can begin to activate a higher vibrational level of compassion and nurturing towards others. Therefore, doing this kind of clearing work for yourself is crucial. Of course, that doesn't mean that you have to put up with abuse or bad behavior, 
That's why it's important to have clear boundaries. So in this video, I'm not going to give you advice on how to change these kinds of people or how to win an argument with them or get them to stop their behavior. The reason I'm not is because that's a waste of time. The likelihood of getting someone to change is impossible unless they themselves want to transform. Instead, I'm going to talk about how you can remain in a state of peaceful equilibrium in all your interactions and thereby maintain your own sense of balance, integrity, dignity, and self-respect. Everyone disagrees with everyone on something. Face it, people will never ever agree a hundred percent on everything. And that is the way it's supposed to be. In my understanding and my limited point of view, I try to see everyone as an extension of myself. Consider a puzzle, for example, one of those 1000 piece puzzles. Now, actually, it's one picture and it's cut up into a thousand little pieces and only one piece fits in a certain place. And even though all these pieces are part of a unified whole picture, the fact is they are all separate. Each one is important to the whole and each piece only fits with three or four other pieces. And that's how it works. This is how it is with humanity as well. We are all individual pieces of one being and can only harmonize within a limited few. The rest don't fit with us. They belong somewhere else. That's the way it is. I've learned to be clear about this long before I ever engage in conversation with anyone, I remember I have my way that it is. They have their way that it is. And these two are completely different. It's not a matter of who's right or wrong. We're both right. We are both individual puzzle pieces in a big picture. That is why the world is perfect at every moment. To see that perfection means you have to widen your consciousness away from a limited spotlight consciousness to a more inclusive floodlight consciousness. Widen your light beam and you will illuminate more of the unity of everything and everybody. When someone asks me a question, I have to be clear in my mind first. I know I am only speaking from my limited way that things are. And sometimes I have to tell them that up front. And when they're speaking to me, I'm also aware that they have a limited perspective and they are talking from their particular way that life is. Trouble always arises when someone thinks that their way that things are is the only way things are. That's when conflict begins. Sometimes I think the great original divine creator laughs at that kind of folly. I always come from the point of view that everything is true. Everything is valid and allowed at some level of vibration within this universe. I don't care if it's tree frogs in Middle Earth or if someone believes that they're a Keebler elf or that Jesus is coming back in a UFO. It doesn't matter to me if someone is a flat earther or that they believe that the world is a matrix simulation. 
to me, it's all part of a world of infinite possibilities. The universe is a huge spectrum of vibrational frequency and all probabilities are included. Realize that some frequencies are contracted and some are expanded. And anyone is free to change their frequency at any time by the degree of love that they feel. All is allowed. Sin as well as holiness. Death and life. Darkness and light. And when you're in a conversation with anyone, just remember this. And don't get caught up thinking that your particular way that things are is absolute. Remember, it's just a puzzle piece. And each piece is vitally important. And it's one of many pieces. Remember this and you won't get offended when someone else contradicts you. You can just say to them, hey, that's groovy the way things are for you. Tell me more. Or you can say something like, that's definitely an interesting point of view. How'd you come up with that? So when you've shared your thoughts or ideas or opinions or beliefs and somebody rejects it, don't get mad. Don't be offended. Just realize they have a closed mind. They're contracted. So what? Instead, you could be like John Lennon when he shared his opinion about population on the Dick Cavett show back in the 1970s. Cavett seemed to get annoyed and he responded, I think you're wrong. Very coolly and confidently, with a little smirk on his face, John laughed and said, I don't care. Watch this. It's awesome. I'll repeat it. Um, I want to know how you as a woman feel about overpopulation in the world and its relation to polluting the environment. Uh, I think how, how, how does Yoko feel about overpopulation? Oh, as a woman, I believe. Yeah. Well, I think the problem is not overpopulation as people believe it to be, but it's more of the balance of things. What, you know, like food, some part of the world is wastage of food and in some parts, you know, nobody has food. And that kind of a balance, if that is solved, I don't think we would be worried so much about overpopulation. I think it's a bit of a joke the way uh, people have uh, made this overpopulation thing into a kind of myth. I don't really believe it, you know. I think whatever happens will balance itself out and work itself out. It's all right for us all living saying, oh, well, there's enough of us, so we won't have any more. Don't let anybody else live. Mm. I don't believe in that. I think we've got enough food and money to feed everybody. And I think the natural balance, even though old people will last longer, I'm sure there's quick... enough room for us, and some of them can go to the moon anyway. You, you mean you think there's enough if it were Yeah, I don't believe overpopulation, you know. I, I think that's just a kind of myth that the oh. uh, government has thrown out to keep your mind off Vietnam and Ireland and all the important subjects. Oh, I think you're wrong about that. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, gentleman there. He doesn't care. 